Hi, I'm Brian Locke and this is my Wi-Fi Tetris clock. It is a clock that gets its time from the internet and as you can see the numbers are drawn using Tetris blocks. In this video I'm going to show you how to make it. Let's start with the hardware we'll need. The first thing is a display. This is a 64 by 32 RGB LED matrix. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I really like these displays. I used them a lot when I was streaming last year. This is about $20 delivered, but you can use different size ones, but you might have to adapt the code for it. For a microcontroller, the ESP8266 would be the obvious choice because I have this D1 mini matrix breakout, but at time of making this video, this sketch was crashing on the ESP8266, so we're going to have to use an ESP32 instead. So we can't use my trusted D1 Mini. That's okay, we can just use this instead. The Tiny Pico! The Tiny Pico is an ESP32 development board, and as you can see, it's tiny. That's about the only thing I'm qualified to say about it. I haven't really used any of its other features yet, but check out Unexpected Maker's channel for more details, and also check out the crowd supply campaign that is currently going right now. We're also going to need a pretty big 5 volt power supply, maybe around 5 amps or so. I like these laptop style ones because they've no exposed mains. You just plug in a kettle cable into them and that's it. What you need after that depends on how you're going to hook it up. If you're just going to hook it up directly, you're going to need some long female to female DuPont wires and you'll also probably need to build an adapter to convert your power supply cable into something the power cables of the display can connect to. It is possible to save yourself a little bit of hassle using a D1 mini matrix breakout, DuPont cables and an ESP32, but for the Tiny Pico I wanted to do something different. You know what the unexpected maker always says make something unexpected, and you know what I always say, okay. This is the Tiny Pico Matrix Breakout Board, and it makes connecting to these displays really easy. First, it plugs directly into the PN connector, and then uses the cables that come with the display to connect up the rest of it. To power it, you can either use the barrel jack or the two screw terminals, and then to connect up your Tiny Pico, You just drop it straight in and that's it done, ready to go. The next thing I wanted to get sorted was a stand for the display. I found these on Thingiverse and they fit this display perfectly, but there was a problem with the barrel jack connector and I needed to do a bit of surgery to get it to work. The other problem with these display stands were that my second display had the screw holes in a completely different position. So even though they fit on it okay, there was nothing to hold them onto the display. So I modified the stands in Tinkercad. I added a couple of little tabs so it'll, uh, it'll work with the original display that it was intended for, but also my other display with the screw holes in the different position. The other thing I added was a cutout for the power cable and then this piece of plastic and just to bridge it so it can't bend. Next, let's take a look at the code. The project is mainly based on this Tetris animation library that I maintain. I can't take the credit for this library though. Tobias Bloom is the original creator of the sketch that it's based on. Tobias's original sketch was for drawing a clock using Tetris blocks on these displays. So not much has changed, right? But using the library, I wanted to address a couple of things. The first thing was Tobias's sketch was hard-coded for a 32 by 16 display, and I wanted to be able to use it on any display. The second thing that I wanted to change was I wanted to be able to use that animation for drawing any numbers, not just a clock, because I thought it would make a really interesting subscriber counter. Another cool thing about the library is a viewer of my channel, Mike Swan, added support for drawing ASCII characters too. I think this looks amazing, so thanks Mike. And finally, the library doesn't just work on the matrix displays anymore, it works on any library that uses the Adafruit GFX library as its base. And I'm sure that's probably enough background on the project, let's get to the code. You can download the sketch from my GitHub account. Uh, there's two versions here, the ESP8266 one, which crashes, so don't use that at the moment, and the ESP32 one. 
To use the sketch you'll have to install a few libraries. I've left a lot of comments in the sketch to say which libraries you need and where to get them from. The main one is the PX matrix one, this controls the display. There's the Tetris matrix draw one, this is what draws the Tetris animation. And easy time is used for getting the time from the internet. To configure the clock, there's a couple of things in this stuff to configure section. You need to put in your SSID and password, and you also need to put in your time zone. The final thing to configure is if you're using a Tiny Pico or a generic ESP32, just search for either Tiny Pico or generic and uncomment the one that you are using and comment out the other one. There's another part in the setup that you'll need to do too. In the sketch I've also allowed for a couple of configurations, so if you want to display the clock in 12 hour format or 24 hour format, you can do that. This is what they look like. Another thing you can configure is this force refresh option. When it's enabled, when the time changes, the entire clock will be cleared and it will redraw all the numbers. When it's set to false, it will only change the numbers that it needs to. Another thing you can configure is the speed in which the blocks fall, and that's triggered by this animation timer. The timer is set at the moment to go off every 100,000 microseconds, which is 0.1 of a second. So if you wanted to make it faster, if you drop that down to 50,000 microseconds, it would look something like this. And that's how you build a Tetris animated clock. Make sure to check out Unexpected Maker's crowd supply campaign if you're interested in the Tiny Pico. The two boards that you've seen are available on my Tindy store. I will also be working on a generic ESP32 one and I'll let you know when that's ready. Probably on Twitter is the best place to find out about that. One more thing I nearly forgot, if you're watching this before Sunday, June 9th, this month's version of MakerCast is on David Watts's channel. Join myself, BitLooney, Liz from Blitz City DIY, Unexpected Maker, and obviously David, as we talk about our previous month in the world of making. Hope to see you there. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I added a new section in the description below with some information on how you can help out. And that's pretty much it. I want to thank everybody for watching, and I'll see you next time.